And to say to create this space, I mean, YPT had been going for five or six years before you started to create the space. Well, we always, I always looked for a space, you know, and uh, we did uh, 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 some things for weekends at a little theater called the Colonnade. You're probably too young to, I remember. to remember that which had all of 125 seats. So you, but we did that, still looking. And um, that's, that's always the problem. You have to first find a place that maybe would work, and then you have to try and get people. Do you remember what places you looked at? We didn't, we didn't see anything. This was the first thing that we saw. We walked by by accident, actually, uh, <clears throat> and it was empty, but it looked so attractive from the outside. And then uh, I found out that it belonged to the city and what it was and that there was nothing inside except water. Water? <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot of water. Meaning it was leaking? Or? From the, no, from the, uh, from the lake underneath. So there were puddles of, of water. Like the Paris Opera. <laughs> so uh, uh, then, uh, then I talked the board into trying to see if we could get it from the city. And, and how was the city to deal with then? The, the city owned it and wasn't using it or anything. I mean, it was... Uh, uh, um, so then we decided, to, I decided to ask um, Eb Seidler, with whom we skied a lot in, in uh, uh, Blue Mountains in Collingwood, whether he would be enticed to try and design uh, a space. He was an architect. Yeah. So we got... Uh, to go inside to look at this. And of course, it was an empty, wonderful space that was very moist and had, had some water in it. And he figured he could probably do something well, for maybe 300, 350 seats. And there, so was a, there was a floor all the way through? There was dirt. There was dirt? Dirt. But there was a, I mean, where that balcony is, was there a floor no. that went all the way across no, or was it just no. an open space? It was just a wonderful open space wow. with dirt. And there was, um, did you ever see uh, uh, a half hour show called uh, The House on Front Street? No. No. Well, <coughs> Jan wrote a, a story about a, a, a knife sharpener who had nowhere to live, and he, he lived in this space, unbeknownst to anyone. And when it was taken over and the theater was being built, he had no home. He had nowhere to stay. And so we, uh, th this is a script that he wrote about himself. <laughs> and. Uh, we got money uh, from uh, uh, the heritage people because this building was, uh, in a sense, a heritage building, and the front was always going to stay the way it is. And then uh, I took it to the CBC Children's TV, and Dodie Robb at the time was head of children's uh, TV. And I asked her whether she would be willing to provide the cameras and the director to produce this right. little half hour show that Jan wrote. But Dodie and I went back to, uh, she and Pat Patterson wrote several musicals for me. Like, uh, anyway. <coughs> for so all those. She, she uh, said she would. And she said, I have a director on my staff that is not meant to do anything, but I have to pay for him because he was given to me, and his name was George Jonas. So George Jonas, <laughs> who was in her department, 
knew nothing about children, as you can imagine. He couldn't I, I can less imagine George Jonas. However, he liked the script, and he was ordered to do it. And it's called A House on Front Street. And for years, we used to show it uh, when YPT had its opening day. It was one of the things, along with live performers, that we always showed it. It's a lovely little piece. I don't a 30 know minute drama? How long is it? A half hour. Half hour, right. And okay. it was shown on, uh, Dodi had it on uh, uh, one of the half hours that she owned for children. And, and Jan played the day. knife seller. And Jan played the knife sharpener. And in the, uh, in the uh, 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 script, eventually, part of it was when the theater opened. And I gave this knife sharpener a job in the theater. He was, he was the, uh, the man who showed the children where to sit at a happy ending. And to create a theater out of a disused building that belonged to the city, how did you work with City Hall? You said it wasn't a good atmosphere and John Sewell was the well, mayor. Well, uh, uh, John Sewell was a tough mayor. And uh, first of all, he didn't want a theater because he felt theaters all go bust and then he'll be stuck with this theater. So we had to go to Eb Zeidler and ask him whether he could uh, make the theater seating s movable so that we could show Sewell that if we couldn't afford to pay the rent, which is what he was interested in, that the theaters would disappear and he would have an empty place like he had before. Right, right. And uh, Eb Zeidler agreed. And this and is overnight 19... overnight had to redesign it. And then we went back to the city and they charged us $15,000 plus $25,000. This is rent per year. Yeah. So $40,000 and we hadn't even opened yet. And uh, that's what we had to pay to the city. But I thought in the early 70s, Toronto's was more arts friendly at that time. Well, I don't think John Sewell was crazy about the arts. And this was a building and he said, I have a right to, to get rent for this building. Even though it had been sitting empty for how many years? Well, that was not of any interest. And how so we paid, uh, the joke was that we paid $40,000 rent and got $6,000 uh, grant money from the Toronto right. Arts Council. So it was kind of funny. And when you have a political problem with that, because I'm, I'm interested in talking about it a bit because I'm, I'm hoping some of the people who watch this will also be uh, people who want to build theatres and create space, spaces and deal with city halls. How did you go at Toronto City Hall to convince them? Did you find allies or was it just uh, Susan well, Rubish twisting uh, their arms or? No, uh, you, I went with the board. Uh, many people on the board were, you know, lawyers, doctors, developers. Uh, and Eb Seidler, who was very well known as a very fine architect and who could show that he didn't charge us to design the theater. That was a donation uh, to the theater. So we looked pretty good going to the uh, going to the uh, committee, of which Sewell, of course, was head of the committee. And uh, we made a brief uh, showing that the children that we had played to in schools would be families that would like to come with their children right. on weekends. Uh, John Elder, who was a lawyer, wrote the brief, a wonderful brief. So it was difficult for them to turn us down because we were going to pay rent for a building that hadn't been getting any money. Uh, we were building a theater that uh, we felt children and their families would come because we had been in in schools for years. So we felt that a lot of those kids would go home and say, right. 
we would like to go to the theater with you. So it, it was not a difficult thing to be turned down, particularly when we then showed that we can put the place back almost the way it was and if we didn't, couldn't play the, pay the rent. And how did you raise the money to redo the building? Well, that's, that's a fundraising nightmare, but uh, you know, you have members of the board who go out and we went uh, everywhere because we had to raise almost two million dollars. It's a lot of money a in 1974. Of money in those days. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> one of the first places I went to was the banks. And it was very interesting because uh, we went uh, with a member of the board to the Royal Bank. And I think his name was Fullerton. Mm -hmm. Charming, wonderful president. And uh, <clears throat> uh, we again, we presented a brief showing what it would cost to run it and how we felt the money would come in and how many people would come and what we would do and so on and so on. And that we would go to all the other banks. And he said, you don't have to go to the other banks because the banks meet once a month and every uh, uh, chairman of a bank would bring forth what uh, uh, what uh, uh, groups had come to ask for money, and then they would t decide together. So there would be no one bank more and one bank less. They would decide how much of your uh, uh, budget they right. would give you, quarter percent, half a percent, one percent. I don't think anybody got more than one percent of their budget. And what were you asking the bank for? How much? We were asking the bank for half a percent. Which would have been? Which would have been, I can't remember. But <laughs> a in, fair in amount. A half, half a million or the multiple oh, no, millions? Oh, no, no, less than that. <clears throat> Maybe 200,000. But you got that from every bank. Oh, I see. Then every bank. Five banks. I see, OK. And uh, then at the same time, you asked for them, uh, once you were running, to give you some money towards your running costs. 